Oh, hi, Ron knows stuff here. You're probably wondering about these countertops. Well, as you can see, we got the countertops done. Got the sink in. Got the dishwasher in. Got the pony wall started. You can see it's there. We just have to put the decorative pieces on it. Plumbing's done. Woohoo! You'll see a piece of string there. That's so that uh, if we add an ice maker, uh, the string goes all the way behind the dishwasher so we can isn't run that, the water line. Isn't that funny that you're saying if, it's when. When. Okay. <laughs> so you're probably wondering how we got the countertops to look the way they look. So let's do a little rewind and I'll show you how we did it. Here I am unpacking the butcher block. Now they say as soon as you unwrap it, they want you to treat it within 48 hours. They also tell you when you're cutting to put a piece of tape where you're going to cut so that it protects the finish of the wood. So it always tells you, of course, measure once, no. cut twice. No, 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 no. Measure twice, cut once. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I also use the tape for uh, drawing my line. And then I brought my square out to make sure that my saw uh, guide was square. And again, measure once, cut twice. No, measure twice, cut once. <laughs> okay. And there you go. Just saw away. And it has a nice finish because of the tape. And then uh, I had to cut it again for the other counter. So that piece, um, that was over to the uh, right next to the oven. This piece will be the piece that the sink goes into. So we used... What did we use to seal this with? We used tongue oil. Tongue, tongue oil. We used the walnut color. And the food grade tongue oil. Food grade. So we did a 200 grit sandpaper first and then um, put it on, let it dry overnight. And then we put a 400 grit from there on between each coat. And the finished product that you saw in the beginning, that was three coats. And that seems to work great. And about every mm, four to six months, we'll coat it again. And we did both sides and the edges. Yes, because... It was exposed. Yeah, anything exposed, you want to do that. And again, we'll reseal at least the tops every four months. We'll probably do the underneath once a year. Uh, uh, I'm guessing more like six months, but that's just yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Um, And then... You also, you also made sure you put the good side of the butcher block Yeah, you know, because you wouldn't think they would have a not so good side and a good side, but yeah. they did. Yeah, it was, it was kind of interesting to see that there was such a thing as a good side and a bad side, but um, I'll, let's not call it a bad side. Let's call it a side with character. Okay. So one side had lots more, of character. <laughs> yeah. One side had more character than the other. So uh, in the beginning of the video, you saw the kitchen. It had... Um, what are you doing here? Is this the sanding? Yeah, this is the first sanding with the 200 grit. You always sand with the grain, not against the grain, with the grain. So always do that, and um, you'll have the best results So with the grain. And you left the electric sander at the other place so you had to do it by hand but it really wasn't that hard at all no not at all so there's one that is already has the first coat and then this is the second or me sanding it with the 400 grit just to get a nice finish on it and the final coat um it, it did not get any sanding afterwards and this is food grade um tongue oil Tongue oil, yeah. And you want to make sure that you do get food grade if you're doing this in the kitchen. Because we didn't put like a lacquer or anything no, on no, top no, of it. No. We wanted it natural. So there is 
one coat, a uh, little piece is three coats. Oh, yeah, zero coats, two coats, and three coats. And now I'm putting the third coat on those boards there. And Coco is making sure I'm doing it right, and so is Mrs. Ron knows stuff. So the kitchen that you saw was all the lowers, the pony wall, the countertops, the uh, refrigerator, freezer, the dishwasher, the oven, and you didn't see the microwave. Uh, we'll be installing that uh, in a future video with the upper cabinets. It's and, kind of doing this in stages and steps as we can. Yeah, but we're still, with all that stuff, um, we're still under $4,000. And that includes, by the way, the paint. So we'll be painting the lowers uh, in another video real soon. We're going to use that heirloom paint, a navy blue. It's the same uh, if you watch one of our other videos about re uh, re um, Doing finishing furniture that china cabinet yeah uh, dining room table yeah we paid like 50 bucks for a dining room table a china hutch a this buffet. looks like it's pretty easy to put on though oh this is super easy um and you just use a rag and um and <laughs> always gloves so uh anyway yeah the heirloom paint we bought all this furniture and got it for 50 bucks and uh, you can watch that video and see that. But that's the paint we're going to use for the cabinets. Doing the edges is not the easiest part, but it can be done. So in these little pieces here, we're going to do some floating shelves with those. And uh, we'll just drill the holes in the bottom or in the side, in the, side, in the back. And then they just go on two pins. Pretty easy and um, this is like I say it's easy to do it just takes time but the end results are fantastic not that much time no we no. really did it pretty quickly yeah and we did them inside the house because uh, it's been cold and you're supposed to do this in 72, 72. degree yeah. weather or warmer so um, and then each each Layer. time you put your your stain on you have to let it dry or yeah. season in for six hours so then you'd flip it over and do the other side so yeah. you know it took us a few days because we weren't you know before and after work kind of thing right and we weren't in in any rush yeah and again you apply this with the grain just like you would do the sanding with the grain and i'm just using a rag and um every time i do a layer i would just throw the rag away and just get a new one so just and this is simple. the first layer on this one right yeah this is the first layer and this is the piece that went over the dishwasher okay so and then the piece behind there that's the little one that went between the oven and the wall that i still got to fix the drywall mm-hmm but yeah, when you're putting this on, you again, you go with the grain and you want to make sure that there's no buildup. So if you see some, just wipe it down. And that's just a simple yeah. throwaway table cloth, you know, plastic one oh, the drop that we cloth. used for the drop cloth. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't want to get it on. The, although I didn't tell you um, the last night when I was doing the third and final coat, I kind of dropped the can. <laughs> <laughs> the plastic liner got it all cleaned up so oh. there's no marks i promise well, that's why we put it there yeah so thank goodness we did that was a good idea yeah you're welcome yeah and you know we're very sophisticated in the tools that we use so the horses you see underneath the countertop <laughs> are not horses at all they're actually tv trays <laughs> you just use what you have <laughs> yeah yeah you know, you don't have to spend money to, to uh, enjoy your life, huh? Yeah, just some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that little can, is that a pint size can? It was a small little can. Yeah, I think it is a pint. But it did all, all these the pieces. Oh, so now we're, we're back up in Georgia here, and I'm putting the little kick plates. Not kick plates. Uh, what do you call those? 
Well, it's just to balance it because it's not, they don't, yeah, that cabinets don't go to the wall. Yeah. So I'm making those little um, boards <laughs> level with the countertop so that uh, everything goes in nice and peaceful. And uh, you just can to see keep that. the counters from warping or anything, keeping them straight yeah. to give them a, an edge on that ledge. They can rest on that. And, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. And when you're put the, you know, the wood is a natural product. So it's going to expand and, and um, collapse. And um, so you got to give it some breathing room. And I'll talk about that in a minute. This was where the dishwasher was hardwired in. So I'm adding an outlet to this so that I can also plug the um, refrigerator in it as well as the dishwasher. I put a, just an electrical cord uh, on the dishwasher so it plugs in instead of hardwiring it. I never liked things being hardwired. Well, and I didn't like the refrigerator being plugged in in the middle of the wall. Yeah, it well, was weird spacing. because we did, did the layout of the um, kitchen, the refrigerator needed a new plug. Now you'll notice, um, or maybe not, but with when wiring an outlet, there's a silver side uh, with screws and a brass side. So you just remember that the white goes to the the shiny and um, the brass gets the dark one. Now, also, I put that outlet in upside down because uh, it's really designed that way originally uh, because the ground will be up top. So if something falls on top of it, it won't short out anything. Because it'll hit the ground wire instead. Exactly. So here I'm building the pony wall. I measured the height of the counter and um, just created this, you know, cut my pieces of wood and now I'm assembling them. And um, and that's to give it a support system on the other side of the dishwasher? Yes, uh -huh. because there is nothing there to hold it. Because then it's just the refrigerator right next to it. Correct. Okay. Now, I did make this a little shorter than the actual height because of the um, I want to shim it so that I get a good fit. And here I'm just putting a little piece of wood there uh, just for the end cap, and we'll paint that. And then on the top here, I'm drilling holes through the wood here so that when I put my decorative piece of wood on top, I'll screw it in from the behind and you won't have any screw holes or anything else to patch up. And that little... Oh, so it looks solid and you don't have to do the putty and sanding. Right, right. Oh, that's a good idea. So see there? That's Look at there. That's why Ron knows stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I clamped it on there so that it would hold on tight. So when I screwed it in, as you can see, boom. Beautiful pony wall. So I've got the pony wall in place and just holding it there. It's, you know, measuring things up. Now you see why the need of the pony wall because dishwasher is not going to support the countertop. Yeah, they're pretty heavy. Yeah. So um, here I am shimming it up to the proper height. And uh, when you do shim it up, you want to put the screw. Well, there we go. I found the stud and I'm screwing it into the stud. And got it nice and level. See, nice and level. Everything's level. And then when you put the screw into the floor, you want to do it right by the shims so everything's there. Remember, I said about um, wiring in a, an, a cord? That's what I'm doing right here. I'm just wiring the electric. So I can plug this dishwasher in and unplug it. And then this is the supply line. Oh, for the water? Uh huh. Okay. Well, the reason that it can wash dishes then. <laughs> yes. And you see the drain hose right there as well. Mm -hmm. I put an extension on it right there. And you should always have a little up and down so that it, it doesn't backflow. And that's what I did there. Now here I'm drilling the holes. I started on the outside so that I would have a little pinhole on the inside. And then I get a nice smooth cut that way. And here's my piece of string. Now that string is for uh, being told that there's going to be a uh, ice maker hookup. So that's what that is. So I can run the water line for that later. I didn't realize we didn't have an ice maker in the fridge. We bought a simple fridge because I didn't wanted low maintenance, not a lot to keep up with. And uh, didn't realize it didn't have an ice maker. So I was doing trays all weekend. Yeah. But that's okay. We'll get the ice maker for when the family's there. Mm -hmm. So here, 
um, placing the sink. Now what I did was, as you can see, I've got one door open. That's the center line. So I went from the center of the cabinet there, see there, and I'm marking the dimensions of our sink. And I measured that. Um, Twice? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I can cut once. And, you know, because, you know, that was, I mean, butcher block is cheaper than granite, uh, but it's still not free. So I really wanted to make sure that I got my measurements good and straight and really, really got it right. I even had you come over, if you remember, to take a second look to make sure that. Yeah, you know, we remeasured the sink yeah. and remeasured the tapes. Right. So, I mean, this video, you can kind of see us going through and double checking. Now, I drilled my pilot holes at each corner because um, saw blades can't do corners. <laughs> so I've got that there, all nice and drilled. I've got my lines and I'm plunge cutting, and here we go. No turning back now. So it got a little, little dusty. I do have my safety goggles on and my earplugs on, just so you know, safety's always first. Oh, uh, you had earplugs, huh? Yeah. And what? <laughs> Maybe your camera crew would have liked that. <laughs> well, and then here you can see I'm just finishing up the last little bit. With, he knows stuff, but doesn't always remember stuff. <laughs> I'm using the jigsaw to get a nice little cut, and there we go. And I'm going to test fit the sink. Look at that. Huh? Nicely Beautiful. done. So now Nicely I'm taking done. the tape off, because again, you have the tape on, so you get a nice clean cut. Drop it in there, and of course, you have to seal it. So once it's finished sealing, I'll hook up the plumbing, or I'll drop in the sink. And I want to thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, because I've got more videos coming.